Okay, so as I had mentioned early on, this adoption credit is quite generous. It's a large amount. It, it increases every year. I think it's indexed for inflation, I do believe. Um, and this, of course, is to encourage individuals to adopt children. You get 100% of the qualified adoption expenses up to a maximum of $14,440 per child adopted. Um, if you're married, you have to file jointly in order to take it, so you can't be married filing separately. So what are qualified adoption expenses? Adoption fees, court costs, attorney fees, other expenses directly related to the legal adoption of an eligible child. So now we've got eligible child that we have to define here as well. One who is under age 18 or is incapable of caring for themselves, but this does not include a child of an individual spouse. Okay, what do they mean by that? If you are, you marry somebody who already has a child and then you adopt that child. That doesn't count, okay? Um, this is, you know, mainly for those where it's, it's they're unrelated. Um, now, when do we take these expenses? Because adoptions are oftentimes protracted, take a long time. So there are certain specific rules for when you get to take this credit. The credit, the total credit is the 14,440. That 14,440 could be spread over one, two, four more years, okay? But the credit, it's not on a per year basis, it's in total. So um, expenses paid in the years before adoption becomes final, you take the credit in the year immediately after it's paid. So if we paid expenses in 2019, <coughs> say we had, uh, and these could include like travel expenses as well if you're going to, to travel, to, if you have travel included in that. Um, so we just say we had 3,000 these we would deduct in 2020, right? If, as long as the adoption did not become final in 2019, you, would, you deduct them in 2020. For expenses paid in the year, <coughs> excuse me, In the year that the adoption is finalized, you take the credit for those expenses in that year. So let's say we finalized it here and we had another 7,000. Then the full credit that we would take in 2020 is $10,000. You take those 3,000 and then this 7,000. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll look at this expensive uh, or example. Myla and Layla adopted a child in 2021. They incurred and paid adoption expenses six thousand dollars in 2020, four thousand in 2021, and five thousand in 2022. <coughs> so in this case, they had some expenses after the year after the adoption was final. $15,000 total. So they're going to get a, a uh, adoption credit. Uh, so they'll get to take the $6,000 from 2020 and $4,000 from 2021. They take that in 2021. So just like our example here, that gets carried forward for $10,000. They've only got 4,440 left of that credit. So that would be taken in 2022 when they're actually incurred.
for a domestic adoption. There are some different rules if the adoption is a foreign adoption. You can still take the credit. Um, but the credit is only allowed in the year in which the adoption becomes final or in a later year if the expenses were paid or incurred in a later year. Okay, so, uh, so even if it, so if this was protracted, like just say we didn't finalize it in 2020, we finalized it, let's see, we have some bank fees, in 2022, one, or maybe we finalized it in 2021. So 2019, for a domestic adoption, we would deduct, deduct that 3,000 in 2020. But for a foreign adoption, we would not deduct it in 2020. We'd have to wait until 2021 because it's the year that it was finalized. Okay, and if we incurred any more expenses here, say 2,000, then that would be over here as well. And if we had 2021 expenses, 5,000. So we get to deduct the 10,000 here. And then if we had uh, another 3,000 in 2022, after the fact, we would take the, the 3,000. Also, there are some special rules when it's a special needs child. So special needs child is a child that would be deemed special needs by the state. There would be specific um, guidelines for it and any individual who is adopting a special needs child, you would know that you're adopting a special needs child. It would be indicated as such in all of the, the legal paperwork. So, like I said, this credit is 100% of the expenses that you incur, right? So you do have to incur the expenses in order to get the credit. For a special needs child, however, you do not have to incur the expenses in order to get the credit. You get the credit whether you incur the expenses or not. Um, and oftentimes with special needs children, they're really, maybe not, not all the time, but um, oftentimes there really aren't any expenses because they're, they're, they are desperate to get this child adopted, right? Um, so you take the $14,440 credit regardless of whether they incurred any expenses. They take the credit in the year that the adoption becomes final. I had a client who adopted two special needs children. Had a huge credit, like $26,000. It was because the amount was lower at the time in the year. They didn't, it gets carried forward. So they weren't going to be paying taxes for a while. It is phased out based on income. So the phase out, the phase out is fairly high though. Um, phase out begins when modified adjusted gross income exceeds 2660, I'm sorry, 216,660, completely phased out at 256,660. The form, oh, yeah, they, you know, they started messing with this, this tracker. They put the wrong form here. This is the saver's credit form that's under the adoption credit. We'll have to look at the next section to see the adoption credit form. Here is the uh, calculation for the phase out. So 256,660, the upper limit minus modified adjusted gross income divided by 40,000. That 40,000 is the phase out range. Okay, so you've seen this, this calculation before in all of our phase outs. That denominator is always gonna be the phase out range, the difference between the top number, top of the phase out range, and the bottom of the phase out range. Okay, so here we've got Nicholas and Elaine. They spent $18,000 of qualified adoption expenses. Modified AGI is 220,000. So if their adoption credit, now they don't get to use the 18,000 in the calculation. It's going to be the maximum amount. The 
they get to use. If it was a, a not a special needs adoption, again, it would be limited to how much they actually spent. If it was a special needs adoption, then it would be the 14 or 40. In this case, if they spent 18,000, they're still limited to the 14 or 40 as their maximum credit. So the fraction is going to be multiplied by the 14 or 40. So their total credit is 13,230. Um, if you, so a lot of times, oftentimes employers will provide adoption benefits to employees, especially larger employers, where those amounts, maybe they'll give uh, an employee $10,000 if they adopt a child and it's not taxable. If that is the case, you have to subtract the amount that you received from the employer um, from that, that total maximum credit that you're entitled to. Questions about the adoption credit? Oh, here's the, oh, here's the adoption credit form. So this is the 8839. You do have to attach the, the paperwork, like the adoption, the legal. So you have to file on paper. You can electronically file. Um, with a credit that big, they do want some sort of Yeah. 